Hello, and welcome back to this series where we profile the people. What? What? Pop tart, please. Who used and exploited Jesse Lee Ward, the self proclaimed number one network marketer in the entire world, while she fought and lost the battle to stage four colorectal cancer. The 34 year old passed away on September 16th, 2023, and it's time we talk about the evil people she decided to keep in her inner circle. This is part two to a multi part series, so if you haven't watched episode one yet, you probably should, although these can be watched out of order. In part one, we examined Eric Worre a network marketing guru who used Jesse Lee Ward's diagnosis and death for his own personal gain on social media and in his personal business. Today, I'd like to focus on Ed Milet and Brian Underwood. If you don't know who these people are, Ed Milet is one of those self-help coach, motivational speaker types of dudes. He's also a huge name in the world of network marketing, being part of the corporate team at World Financial Group. From allegedly charging Jesse Lee Ward $30,000 an hour for personal one-on-one -on -one training to convincing her that she needed to continue working through her illness instead of taking time to heal and recover and rest. And then he backtracked on that sentiment after she died. Ed Milet did Jesse Lee dirty. And then we have Brian Underwood, the CEO of Prove It. Prove It is the MLM that Jessie Lee Ward ended up in after being dismissed from her previous MLMs. She spent years trying to get in with Brian Underwood, only for him to dismiss her until she was conveniently diagnosed with cancer, when he offered her a job at Prove It Corporate to further convince her to keep working until she died. His intentions with this job offer have been widely speculated about online, but it's my opinion that these intentions were not as pure as Brian Underwood would want you to believe and we will be examining that shortly. These two men exploited Jesse Lee Ward until the very end, squeezing every ounce of energy and money that they could out of her, until she finally and unfortunately lost her battle with cancer. Instead of convincing her to, you know, take some time to care for herself and rest and relax and focus on her well-being and just beating the illness that was ravaging her body, they convinced her to work for them. So first, let's start with Ed. My let. His connection to Jesse Lee Ward stems from coaching specifically. Jesse Lee claimed that she was paying him $30,000 an hour for personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. And she confirmed this when she was being interviewed for the Dream Podcast by Jane Marie. That was a funny situation because Jesse Lee actually ended up going live while she was being interviewed for the Dream, but she didn't know that the Dream was an anti-MLM podcast. So hilarity definitely ensued on that one. But she did drop this info bomb on us during that interview. Are you expensive? I don't think so. I actually know I'm okay. underpriced. I'm pretty underpriced. I'm really underpriced according to my my coach. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I should raise my prices. That's a good reminder. I'm the but... person always yeah. telling people to raise their prices. When I found out what my coach was charging me, I was like, that's not enough. Like yeah. eighty five dollars an hour or something. I was like, that's ridiculous. What are you? What? Wow. And I understand I'm, I'm, I'm hurting myself here by telling you you're not charging enough. But, no, you know, I actually appreciate yeah. you even saying that. Like, I love this conversation. This is an important conversation for people to hear. So it's like, I really truly believe that you get what you pay for in mm -hmm. anything. So, and it's stupid. It's almost stupid what I'm about to say. I know that I pay my coach $30,000 an hour. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. Wow. Okay, so I know. <laughs> But I'll be Whoa. telling you about the results I get from having this guy coach me, okay? It's ridiculous. It's like I'm able to tap into the network. I'm able to tap into his brain. I'm able to tap into his expertise. He's built things that I've wanted to build. Uh, and, and he and he helps and he guides me. It's a time machine. You know, you don't know how much time you have on this earth. Nobody does. So why are you diddle daddling around, wasting your time, time, time trying to figure everything out when you're staring at somebody who's done exactly what you want to do? You mm -hmm. should hire them. Uh, so I, I don't charge enough either. You said 85 an hour. My, my group coaching is nowhere near 85 an hour. That's it. Prices are going up. That's it. After this podcast, you better join now. If anyone listening, <laughs> that's it. The price come has gone September. up. So what can $30,000 an hour buy you in the world of personal life coaching? Well, according to this episode of Ed's podcast, where he interviews Jesse Lee, he says the day after she had surgery to remove a chunk of her colon, she was on a coaching call with him. She gets this diagnosis, you guys. She has the surgery, and the next day is our coaching call, and she's in her hospital bed with a laptop 
doing the coaching call with me, and that wasn't her only meeting that day. I want you to imagine that. You got, what was it, 10 inches of your colon removed? So am I allowed yeah, to say 10 that? to 15. 10 yeah. to 15, plus this tumor, the whole thing together. And the next day, she's on a call with me. How you doing? She's pumping me up on the call. <laughs> she's pumping me up from the hospital bed. That's the type of extraordinary woman that we're talking about here today. So start to ask yourself, how would you respond? How would you react? What kind of person do you have to be to just be totally okay with taking $30,000 from a woman who is recovering from major surgery and was just diagnosed with stage four cancer, given a terminal prognosis, and you're just like, okay, that'll be $30,000, please. Like, even if Jesse Lee insisted on doing that call, despite her being in the hospital, if Ed really considered Jesse Lee to be a friend of his and he actually cared about her well being, he probably should have been like, you know, this is just my opinion, but he should have been like, hey, maybe just take some time to rest. We we can reschedule, we'll do this another time, you know? Instead, he has this coaching call with her, and then a few months later, he has this podcast episode with her, which, by the way, the title of this episode is Doctors Say She Only Has Months to Live, and that's it. Like, it doesn't even mention her name. She's not even in the tags of the video. Listen, like, I understand the need for clickbait, Every single YouTuber uses it to some extent. There's definitely a line that can be crossed when we're talking about clickbait here. There's an ethical way to get people to click on your video and then there's unethical ways like Ed Milet using someone he considers to be a friend, not even just a friend. At a certain point, he's like, she was like my daughter to me. I tell her all the time, I don't know if you're like my daughter or my young sister or what, but you know, I have this affection for her. And he's just like exploiting her illness all over his YouTube channel. I mean, she died almost half of a year ago. So like, maybe it's time to change up that title, Ed. Like you could make this a tasteful memorial episode of your friend. You could change the title to honor her now, but instead he's just leaving it up as clickbait. <laughs> and since his channel has over 900,000 subscribers, like he's getting close to a million, like it's like 960,000 or something like that. This is definitely monetized. I don't even think there's a reason to speculate on whether or not it's monetized. Like, come on. But anyway, yeah, he has her on his podcast where he encourages her and he praises the fact that, you know, she's taking training calls from her hospital bed, which only further emphasizes the need to keep going, keep pushing through it in hustle culture. There is no time freedom when every waking second of your life is being spent working and hustling, including recovering from major surgery. Or, you know, we see it all the time with MLM distributors, like going live from their hospital bed after giving birth or something like that. Like, it's ridiculous. The hustle mindset is inhumane at this point, in my opinion. At the very least, it's unhealthy, and Ed Milet charged Jesse Lee Ward $30,000 dollars an hour to teach her that. I was told I would be dead most likely in October. Correct. They told me I, there was there's no way I'm going to see Christmas. Um, which I was just sharing this story earlier with somebody, but I was talking about how amazing you've been through all of this. Oh, thank and you. I said I sent that text when they sent me sent, uh, when the doctor said that to me to three people. And one was you, and you called me right away. And I remember right where I was, and you're like, no, 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 no. You visualize the biggest Christmas and the living notes going back and all this stuff. And I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry. I think one of the, I'm just so proud of you. In this interview, he also reinforces the idea that it's Jesse Lee's fault for having cancer. And to be fair, Jesse Lee does say the, I created this line first, but the way Ed elaborates on this way of thinking is just so terrible, in my opinion. He says cancer comes from stress and depression and anxiety and trauma. And then he suggests that that's the case across the board. And it's like, you can't, hey, sir. <laughs> Ed. By the way, I just want to say something. I'm not a doctor either, but I think there's a power to saying I created this and so I can fix it. I think there's yes. a power to that. And even if you're not in that camp and you've, and you've had a disease, I think we would all agree that worrying and anxiety and, and anger or frustration isn't healthy. You said you created this, meaning, yeah. and I think I know what you mean. All the stress, all the trauma, all the reliving the trauma, all the holding on to it, all the intensity pointed in the right direction makes a lot of awards and a lot of money intensity in the other direction can do harm and then he says that all of those factors that i just listed those cancer causing factors they cause genes to activate earlier i'm not 
a scientist or a doctor or a medical professional in any way, but that doesn't sound correct to me, <laughs> that genes can just activate. <laughs> Maybe he used the wrong word. I don't think he meant genes. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Listen to this, though. And I was actually asking, you came up last week. My mom asked me how you were doing because I've told my mom about you. And um, we were talking about my dad's cancer. My dad still, my dad wasn't 34, my gosh, but my dad died young, relatively speaking. And I said, Mom, do you think dad's trauma that he held on to from his upbringing and his stress, and my dad was this tremendous worrier, I inherited that from my dad. Most things with our kids are caught, not taught. I always say, I caught that from my dad. Worrying and anxiety and something to be around my dad. He's just like, <sighs> like a sigh for no reason, you know? And I said, mom, do you think that maybe that brought some of this on or turned those genes on sooner? The stress and the anxiety and the worry. And my mom said, absolutely 100% yes. This is not the kind of advice that I would ever be caught paying $30,000 an hour for. And listen, personal responsibility is a pretty big thing in a lot of aspects in life. It's very important to be able to take personal responsibility for things. However, don't make people feel like it's their own fault for having cancer. I mean, that is disgusting. And obviously there are some cancers that are caused by bad personal decisions, like smoking a pack a day for 20 years and then getting lung cancer or going tanning every week in a tanning bed and then getting skin cancer. Like those circumstances obviously exist, but then those cancers that I just listed can also affect people who don't spend a lot of time outside or have never smoked a cigarette in their life. So it's not fair to blame cancer patients for their illness. It's not just unfair, it's straight up cruel. He also insults the ever living hell out of Jesse Lee during this interview. At one point after she's done speaking, he's all like, you're smart, but you're not this smart. Like this isn't Jesse Lee speaking, this is the Holy Spirit. Like, okay, Ed, rude. By the way, what you're saying is just absolutely brilliant and it, and you are smart but you aren't this smart. And this is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. And that's not exploitative or anything like that, I don't think. Maybe it's like manipulation of a religious person at best, but to me, it was just like a really odd thing to say. <laughs> On the topic of Ed being absolutely terrible to Jesse Lee, he also brings up her weight a lot. And if you didn't know, if you're new to the whole world of Jesse Lee Ward, she lost a lot of weight really, really fast. And we all noticed it. I know a lot of people at the time thought that she was using Ozempic. To me, I was just like, this girl looks sick. Like, what's going on? To the point where, and I'll even show you the screenshot. I got the permission from Erin to share this. But in January 2023, I sent Erin a message because she had shared this video of Jessie Lee working out. She posted it to her stories and I responded just with a like shocked face because of how sickly I thought she looked. We had a very brief conversation and I said, do you think she has an ED? Because if you didn't know, Erin B's actually used to be friends with Jessie Lee. No matter what it was, you know, none of us knew she had cancer yet at that point, but we all knew something was up. Like we knew she looked sick. So it was just wild to look back at that time. But in Jesse Lee's mind, that weight loss that she experienced was intentional. And we'll touch on all the stuff that she was doing in, I think the next episode is probably when I'll touch on her doctors, quote unquote doctors, her holistic practitioners and things like that. But she was doing a lot of like woo woo biohacking type stuff, injecting herself with a bunch of stuff stuff, dude. And then finally, she starts losing the weight that she had been trying to lose for years. She'd always been a gym rat, you know? She has years of pictures of her having been working out at a gym or something like that, but never was able to actually lose that weight until now. She thought all of her biohacking and woo-woo stuff was working. It turns out that her body was just starving itself because of cancer, which is really, really sad. The reason I bring any of this up is because Ed brings up her weight at least twice in this interview. Like he seems oddly obsessed with her losing weight. Also, just because I thought I was in the best shape of my life. Which and you so were. I really was. I went on a health journey starting in May of 2022. Uh, I was intentionally losing weight. But I remember when we, I did an event at my home and she came and I remember thinking, my gosh, she looks incredible. She looks different. I tell her all the time. I found our first photo I got to show you. You have no idea. I met you at 10X was the first time I actually met Whoa, you. Way back. You would, I, I had bright know. blue hair. It's craziness, right? So. <sighs> That was me. I do remember that you were heavier then. Yeah, and you I were bright blue then. hair. I remember <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, Ed, she was heavier back then because she didn't have cancer. I just find it so odd that 
Everyone in her inner circle was so quick to be like, wow, Jessie, you look amazing. When meanwhile, the rest of us on the outside who don't know her or have no, I guess, investments in her, we're all like looking at her from the outside just being like, oh shit, is she okay? But the people who are closest to her are like, she looks amazing. It's like, oh, I don't know, man. Like this was not just weight loss caused by diet, exercise, and biohacking, you know? But I think what really made most people upset about this interview with Ed Milet is how Jesse Lee brings up that she was ready to put the boss Lee part of her to rest because she needed to focus on healing. And Ed Milet had the audacity to tell her, no, don't do that. You need boss Lee more than ever now. Like he told her that she needs to continue working through all of this and document everything so that when she finally beats cancer, she can write a book and make a bunch of money. Is that what your $30,000 life coaching is, Ed? Because it didn't work out that way. You're not that great of a life coach. I will never forget forget when I when we first talked about the diagnosis and I said to you on a coaching call I said Ed I think I need to put boss Lee to rest I think I need to just kind of chill a little bit and go more into just quiet time and whatever and I remember seeing your face and you didn't say anything you went mm -hmm, okay and I went maybe that's not and then I realized, no, Boss Lee is the reason I have all of this stuff. Is And I don't mean things. I mean the accomplishments, the accolades, the wealth. The all Because she is an aggressor. She doesn't let people stomp all over her. How am I going to let cancer come in and stomp all over me? Oh, no. Like, actually, Boss Lee needs to show up more than ever. And honestly, you know, we'll never know if her taking this advice had any actual negative effects on the cancer. Like if she hadn't taken this advice, would she have lasted a little bit longer? Who knows? We'll never know the answer to that. I think it's just widely understood that rest and self-care is one of the best things that someone can do when they're going through a serious illness. And obviously the best thing that Jessie Lee could have done for prolonging her life would have been following her doctor's recommendations to do chemotherapy and stuff like that. Again, her body, her choice. She chose not to do that, that's on her. But aside from that, rest, heal, take some time to let your body chill out a little bit. That's pretty widely understood advice. But instead, Jessie Lee was constantly traveling, doing speaking engagements, training, packing customer orders, living large, like basically the opposite of probably what any doctor, like legitimate doctor would have told her to do. And why? Because the guy that she was paying $30,000 an hour for life coaching told her that this is how she should continue living through her terminal diagnosis. Like it just is so strange. And by the way, for people like you and I, winning is fun. Yes. Right? Winning, achieving, competing, being number one. Um, seeing what you're capable of. She's not, she's, trust me when I tell you, she's not talking about just sit around and enjoy the moment. She's saying, do things you enjoy. If you're a winner, if you're a competitor, yeah. go freaking win and compete because you all know we love that stuff, right? I'm, I like winning more than I like sitting on the beach. I just <laughs> flat out you do. do, and so do you. But know. you know what I'm talking about. She's yes, got this I diagnosis. Do. She's still speaking my head. She goes, I just freaking slayed it. Best talk I've ever given. And she lights up when she talks about that. There's this side to her that I love that's this Boss Lee side. And I want her to show up here a little bit too because there's these sides. There's this, this reflective, kind, gentle, forgiving, wise, perspective having patient woman that I really love but there's this other thing this other being who's like I'm gonna stomp you we're gonna win get off your butt let's go and you've pushed people in their lives like you've pushed you. I know I've been picking this interview apart a lot here, but I will honestly say that the podcast episode itself is not all bad. There are some insightful moments, but if it's any insight into what Jessie Lee was getting out of her $30,000 an hour life coaching, it just doesn't sound worth it to me. So when Jesse Lee passed away, all of us really expected to hear the news from Eric Worre first, because if you watched part one of this series, you know that Eric is the one who told all of us that she had colorectal cancer in the first place, which was odd. So we were expecting him to be the one to tell us when she passed, but it wasn't Eric. He might've been in second place, but da 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 da, it was Ed Milet. Ed Milet probably beat Eric to it because Eric was doing a speaking engagement for, you know, two, two 3,000 people. people. So, you know, he didn't have the time to make a post like this. But I mean, this was just a few hours after her actual passing. So he was quick with it. I can't say that 
we were all surprised by the actual announcement. I mean, it's obviously surprising to hear such devastating news from someone like fucking Ed Milet. But since Eric Worre had been posting updates for a few days at this point, he had gotten on his private jet to fly to Dallas to see Jesse Lee on her deathbed. He was giving us updates on his stories. So like we all knew things were bad. So I can't honestly say that this news coming from anyone was necessarily surprising. I mean, I guess it still kind of was. I think a lot of us were really in denial. I was in denial, despite everything that Eric Worre was posting. But you know, and this is kind of off the topic of Ed Milet and Brian Underwood in this video here, but I do want to mention that while Eric Worre was giving us all of these updates that sounded really bad, her downline and like, I guess her inner circle, they were all also posting pictures from the hospital. Like they were all taking up a bunch of space Space in the waiting room and they were just posting pictures looking not that sad like considering the circumstances why is everyone smiling so big like this but then I'm like how else would you pose for a picture in this circumstance why would you take a picture in this circumstance that's the real question why take a picture at all they're treating this like it's a social gathering like look at we're all together and having a great time oh it's because our upline is on her deathbed like I don't know if those posts were kind of like a reason for me personally and probably other people to just kind of be like maybe it's not as bad as we think it is because like they all look happy, you know? It was a weird time. Either way, whatever, let's get into Ed Milet's post announcing the death. And again, just keep in mind that this is how the general public found out that Jesse Lee had passed away. This is the post that they all had to see. I'm heartbroken. She would call me dad and I was honored every time she did. One week after she asked me to be her coach, she was diagnosed with cancer. I know many of you fell in love with at I'm Boss Lee when she appeared on my show several weeks ago to share her cancer journey with all of you. Okay, wait. I, I didn't even write this into my script, but reading that part out loud, I'm like, gross. Because he's like advertising his podcast. He's just like, hey, you guys know this girl, right? If you've never seen this girl's face before, make sure you go check out this podcast episode I did with her. Like, this is not the right time to be doing this, Ed. Anyway, I'm devastated to have to share the news of her passing. You didn't have to share the news. You could have waited for someone else to do it. Like, how come you had the responsibility in your mind to be the one to share the news? Like, what? I know so many of you have been praying for her, especially the last few days. God has called her home today. I love you, Jesse Lee, and I miss you so much. I will do my best to honor you in all I do. Heavenly Father, you have a special one back home now. Hold her close. And again, this is another one of those circumstances where just like when Eric Worre was making all these update posts and telling us she had cancer, I'm like, was this planned? Did you get permission to share this? Did someone say, yes, Ed, you can be the one to share the news? Like to me, if I were in this position, I wouldn't want to share the news before her own family, you know? And you know, Courtney and Aviram, that's her best friend and her boyfriend at the time, had access to her social media credentials. Like, they easily could have gone onto her own personal profiles. And they did too. Like they posted stuff after she had passed. Like I think there's a post that's just like rest in peace or whatever. Someone had access to Jesse Lee's social media. Her death announcement post probably should have been made there. And then everyone else could have followed suit, I guess. I mean, that that's just my opinion. Like I think that that's what should have happened. But I'm like, what happened behind the scenes where Ed Milet thought that this was okay for him to be the one to announce it? Or did nothing happen behind the scenes? And again, he's Ed Milet, he can do whatever he wants. Like the more I think about it and the more I look into what took place after she died, I feel like there was so much scrambling around. You know what I mean? Like for everyone in her life, everyone was scrambling. Like they had to make social media posts. They had to go on Instagram live and cry. But we have to do this for Jesse and it's like why I don't think you're doing it for Jesse at this point you're doing it for yourself like that's just the vibe I get maybe you guys disagree with me but to me I'm like everyone needs to chill dude and that's not even the worst of it it does get worse <laughs> after Jesse Lee died Ed Milet posted I don't know if it was an episode of his podcast I don't think it technically counts as that but it's a YouTube video where he talks about grief and at least Ed Milet mentions and acknowledges that we need time to grieve unlike like Eric Worre, who's just like, no time to grieve, gotta keep working. Like, <laughs> like thank you, Ed 
my let for acknowledging that humans naturally will go through a grieving process. So <laughs> at least there's that. One thing that Ed Milette didn't do though was honor Jesse Lee Ward. The reason I say this is because at the very beginning of this episode on YouTube, there's a title screen. At first glance, nothing seems wrong about this title until you realize that her birthday is November 1st, not October 12th. And if she was 34 when she died, almost 35, her year of birth would be 1988, not 1987. So for those of you who are wondering why we're super excited for November 1st, A, it is my 35th birthday on November 1st, so you guys can wish me happy birthday on November 1st. The man who told the world that Jesse Lee Ward had passed away from cancer couldn't even get her birthday right? And to be fair, the internet in general can't either. When you Google what her birthday is, that incorrect date comes up. I don't know who got Jesse Lee's birthday wrong first. Was it the internet or was it Ed Milet? No one truly knows at this point, but it's incorrect nonetheless. Basically this whole episode is about him and not really honoring Jesse Lee and her memory at all. He says some pretty wild stuff in this video and it's filmed about 48 hours after her passing and like he doesn't seem upset or somber at all, just like Eric Worre. And I think it's pretty obvious by now that Jesse Lee Ward was simply just dumb dollar signs to him. It's the same way I feel about Eric Worre. And I'll say that like in my comment section, I did have a few people mad at me saying like, how dare you tell people how to grieve, I guess. My point is, I don't think these people are grieving. I don't think they have any grief. This is just my personal opinion. Like just looking at this from an outside perspective, I am not seeing people who are upset. I am not seeing people who are grieving the loss of someone close to them. I'm seeing some rich men and we're talking like they've made a lot of money off of her or by being in her inner circle like these friendships were transactional and, and that's basically how every MLM relationship is people go into multi-level marketing companies and they're like oh I just really want community I'm looking for friends I want people who have common interests with me blah 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 and then when you leave those people aren't your friends anymore unless they also leave <laughs> and then you guys can like get back together and be like wow that experience sucked you know but other than that once someone leaves the team of an MLM like you guys are not friends anymore anymore. Every interaction you have with these people while you're in an MLM is transactional. It's circumstantial. It's not because they actually give a shit. So that's what I'm trying to say is that like, I'm not seeing any grief. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt because people in the comments basically told me this is just their way of grieving or whatever. Like I'll say that, okay, fine. That's a possibility, but I like, I'm just not seeing it. I'm sorry. But like Ed's sitting here, like I had to film this video multiple times cause you know, the tears wouldn't stop flowing. And I'm like, where though? This is certainly gonna be a different type of podcast this week. One that I wish I wasn't doing. <clears throat> One that I've tried to record now three times. And uh, before I hit the record button, I couldn't couldn't stop the tears from flowing, so. He even makes a weird noise when he's saying that she died, but he's off screen, so we can't see him while he makes that noise. Jesse Lee Ward. Is he supposed to be crying? Passed away of. <clears throat> he doesn't sound like he's crying. What is happening? She passed away of stage four cancer that we had talked about on this very show and, and the fight that she was having and that we thought that she was winning. Touching on the fact that she was on a coaching call with him the day after having part of her intestines removed, he says that that's the moment he realized he loved her. One week after she asked me to coach her, I just wanna share this with you. She was diagnosed and had a very lengthy, very difficult surgery. They removed part of her intestine and her colon. And um, I'll never forget thinking, well, she'll cancel this coaching call and we'll do it when she's out of the hospital. And she didn't. This coaching call happened and she was in her hospital bed, had just come out of surgery the day before, had her laptop out, her notepad out and was ready to go. And I thought in that moment, I love this young woman. You mean the moment that you were still willing to accept $30,000 from her instead of like rescheduling to let her rest? She wants to keep working through the last six months of her life. Wow, what a hero. Such a strong person. So dedicated. Wow, no, that's sad. It's sad that Jessie Lee Ward spent her last months on Earth working every single day, running her Boss Lee Accelerator course. So that's her, she had like a whole coaching thing of her own. So she was still doing that, packing orders 
years of overpriced ketones, going live, doing trainings, and then on her off time, she was juicing and putting coffee up her butt. As time continued to tick by faster than she realized until it was too late. In my opinion, this is primarily because of you, Ed, for making her believe that this is the way that she should be living her last days on Earth, instead of encouraging her to do what's best for her, instead of telling her that she should be spending time with her loved ones, eating, you know, the food that she wants, that the food that makes her happy, relaxing, pampering herself. No, instead, he tells her she needs to be working. Then, Ed has the audacity to be like, what I've learned from this is that I work too hard and I should slow down. In my case, it's a little different than many people, but I need to slow down a little bit. I'm spending too much time working, too much time giving. I am. Too much time not taking rest, not enjoying the simple things in life. In my case, I need to say no to more things that are opportunities of mine. I need to get part of my life back. I need to get part of my personal life back. I need to get my social life back. I've taken a look this week at my friends, and I think I've had most of my friendships on maintenance mode now for too many years where there's a text, there's a hello, there's a lunch, but it's not as deep as it should be or as it once was or as it could be. And I need to evaluate because people matter, things don't. You took tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars from Jesse Lee Ward and told her to keep up the grind and keep up the hustle, even though she was terminally ill. And then when she dies, he goes, oops, that was bad advice, lol. Look, human beings are allowed to change their minds, okay? That's fine. However, most human beings aren't making $30,000 an hour to tell other human beings how to live their lives. Like he has much more responsibility than almost every other human on earth to kind of have all of his ducks in a row and stand strong in his convictions and stuff like that. And if he realizes that for himself, then that's great, but he better not be charging other people $30,000 an hour to give them that same advice after Jesse Lee has passed away. What Jesse Lee needs was gentle guidance and what she got was some rich guy encouraging her to never stop working. I feel like, in my opinion, that played a role in her thought process in the last few months of her life. So great job, Ed. Thanks for your contribution. Now, the last part of this video is just gonna be a quick touch on Brian Underwood, who is the CEO of Prove It. On June 2nd, 2023, Jessie Lee Ward made this post on her Instagram announcing that she now had a job. Brian Underwood offered her the position of Vice President of Field Development and Performance on the corporate team of Prove It. Despite Jessie Lee running all over the place afterwards, telling everyone that she was the Vice President of the company when she was really the vice president of a corporate branch of the company, but anyway. So not only am I obviously a rep for, for Prove It, love it so much, I'm also vice president of the company. While this might look like an offer made in good faith from our undie boy here, and you know, it's likely that her being on payroll got her standard employee benefits like health insurance and an HSA and stuff like that, even though all the stuff that she was doing was alternative medicine and not covered by insurance, but anyway. There has been speculation of an ulterior motive. So Jessie Lee says this in her announcement post. These are Jessie Lee's own words. 2.5 years ago, I approached the founders and asked them for an opportunity to bring the company together and not have it be the empire versus prove it and come together as one. Just so you know, the empire is what Jessie Lee called her team. So she was the upline and everyone beneath her, that was the empire, fitting. And there was also talk, I don't know the details of this, but I just saw a lot of people talking about it on Reddit, that like there were people who were mad that Jessie Lee was allowed to have her accelerator courses, like basically a side business while she was also in prove it. There were people who were like, she shouldn't be allowed to do that, which is wild. But anyway, she continues. I said I'd share every system I have, every training, every development tactic, all of my skill-based training, and I would be focused on leading this company straight through to a billion a year and beyond all around the globe. I didn't pitch it that well though. I asked if my ask was out of line. I was told, no, it's bold, but you're good enough. It didn't work out as the world was all exploding upwards in e-commerce and you could pretty much make a post on social media and sell 50 boxes of ketones. Nobody's doing that, Jesse. No one did that. Maybe you did that. That was that was it. I knew it would correct itself. I knew 23 would come and people would start jumping ship all over MLM as the economy shifted, looking for the next best thing or for a special deal or for guaranteed income. I backed off. 
probably took it a little personally, decided to grow a lot and stayed in my lane, but I knew I had so much more to give. Then I got a call. At Brian Undy told me he had wanted to ask much sooner, but the cancer stuff had to come first and he didn't want to overstep. I text, thank you for including me in business conversations. And he said he knew the time was now. After he asked, I texted him, thank you. In a weird way, you've given me something to live for. It's kind of sad reading that, right? Jesse Lee pitched this partnership to Brian literally two and a half years ago and it didn't happen then. So why now? Why, after she's been diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer and is refusing the treatments that her traditional oncologists are telling her she needs to do in order to survive this. Why now is Brian Underwood like, okay, now is the time. This is all speculation, but from the sounds of it, according to Jesse Lee's own words, she wanted to offer all of the training she had ever done through her accelerator course and basically give prove it ownership over it. And now that Jesse Lee has died, it's kind of assumed that prove it now has ownership over all of the content that she had made in her own personal coaching business, which would allow Brian Underwood to essentially repackage everything that Jesse Lee had ever done and use it to sell people on the prove it opportunity to be like we have amazing trainings available exclusively to people in prove it to learn from the greatest you know jesse lee god rest her soul so please join prove it and get access to all of boss lee's old trainings and stuff or he could just resell it for more money in general but also you know it was more incentive for her to work up until she died instead of enjoying her last few months. It just seems so messed up to offer a job to someone who honestly just needs to chill and rest and enjoy life, all because you have something to gain from it, despite what it means for that person's health. She has not had a real job in over a decade, I'm pretty sure at this point. It's almost cruel to offer someone a position on your payroll while they're actively losing their battle to cancer. Again, like this is just speculation. From the outside looking in, if you don't dig too deep into it, it probably just looks like, oh, that's a nice thing. She deserved it. Like, how nice of him to give her a job. But to me, I think he saw that her time was running out. Her death was rapidly approaching. And he was like, well, if I'm ever going to get my hands on all of her training, it's going to need to be now. So I guess I'll take you up on that offer you gave us two and a half years ago so that he could continue to make money off of her image for years to come. But, you know, it was disguised as like, we need this position filled and Jesse Lee is the best person to do it like I don't know there's no proof of any of that that I know of but I would say we'd all be naive not to consider it though Jesse Lee was prove its cash cow and I can imagine that they're gonna be struggling to function without her there's also been some like announcement posts I don't know if I can get them or not I'm not sure if they've been posted to reddit if I can find them I'll put them here but apparently prove it is finally distributing Jesse Lee's downline to like multiple sources so like I don't think they're all rolling up to her upline who's name is Lisa Grossman, I'm pretty sure. I think Brian Underwood and whoever else is in charge of it on the Prove It team, they're like moving people around and being like, here's your new upline, here's your new upline. All of it's just really odd. But anyway, guys, that's all I have on Ed Milet and Brian Underwood. I think our next video in this series, like I mentioned, is going to be about her doctors, quote unquote doctors, not her real doctors, because her real respectable doctors all told her the truth, but she didn't want to hear the truth. So she ended up spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on woo woo pseudoscience bullshit that didn't work. So we're going to be touching on that in the next episode. There's a lot there. So stay tuned. Again, if you haven't watched episode one, you can go back and watch episode one now. And then of course, make sure that you're subscribed. Turn on the bell icon if you want notifications of when the next episode in the series goes live. But really quickly, of course, I have to thank my patrons and my members, guys. The list of names I'm about to read off are my financial supporters. They get access to things like our private Discord server. We have a postcard club and sometimes even more than that. So if any of that sounds good to you, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie or you can click the join button beneath this video to join my YouTube memberships. Whatever platform you want to join on works well for me. There's an airplane. Just gonna wait for that to go away. Okay, and with that, <laughs> the biggest thing you in the whole wide world goes to. Hula Chowdown, Jacqueline Nutton, Kessie Drew, KJ Barnes, Leanne, Sarah Simi, Caroline Reed, Daniel Urena, Maddie Darley, Ray, Turd Ferguson, FPS Diesel, Martine Hubert, Love to Be Evil, Amber Price, 
Baby Pink Pearl, Alice Wagner, Carol Campbell, LaSalle Story, Mother Dragon 82, Fallon Lowry, Hannah, The Best Elephant, Jessica Bilhart, Emmy on, and Auntie Lou. And to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and for being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter, thanks for making it to the end of this video because YouTube loves watch time. So when there's a lot of watch time on one of my videos, YouTube's like, let's push it out. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for all your comments and likes and engagements and stuff like that. So I will see you and Pippi will see you. See, look, when you make it to the end of videos, sometimes you get a, a kitty, a kitty sighting. Huh. She's purring. Do you hear her? She's the best. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. See you soon for episode three. Bye.